is an <coughs> eye-popping number. So can you kind of explain how you came up with that number? What percentage of that $10 trillion is cryptocurrencies and how much of it is sort of the, the related ecosystem around blockchain and crypto? So I think the vast majority is actually on the ecosystem. So what I'm trying to describe in that report is essentially creating a decentralized world computer. Uh, so I think what people misunderstand about the cryptocurrency space is it's not just a store of value, which I think you guys have done a very good job of covering, but it also allows you to, to secure the Internet. So essentially now, right now, we trust third-party providers such as iCloud or Dropbox to hold our uh, storage and photos and things like that. But in the future, we'll be able to do this for free, essentially, by using something like a file coin or a different type of coin, whatever it's going to be called. And so essentially that market, you're starting to, if, you're starting to approach IT spending. And so when I think about that market as well as the store value, which alone is already a $30 trillion TAM, if we include the amount of money that's held in overseas banking, uh, we get to a very small number of $10 trillion, which is basically 33% of just the store value use case. I think the example in your report about Dropbox is a, is a very interesting one because most people can relate to that. The notion that Dropbox is centralized because the, anybody with access to the Dropbox servers actually has access to your data that you're storing on Dropbox, whether it be photos or files or, or what have you. Um, and this could really decentralize it in that no longer will that person with access to that server have access to your information. How... How Correct. fast can we see this ramp? Because Im implicit in this call of this decentralized information is sort of a displacement of a lot of other companies and business models out there, like a Dropbox. Right, exactly. So th that's why you see a lot of companies not really interested in talking or investing in the space, because they're going to essentially become a node in the network at long term, right? So I think that my $10 trillion call is obviously a multi-year call, call it 10 to 15 years or something like that. And we'll see a lot of ups and downs as many of these decentralized applications will essentially be worthless. But when we think about the blockchain, at least the one thing that the bulls and bears can agree on is we have a, a you know, $7 trillion or $700 billion market that has never been hacked. So what people are now doing is they're building on top of that network, and that increases the value tremendously because now we have built a new level of the Internet. That's why they call it Web 3.0. That will not be hackable. So now you are able to not only get rid of kind of the middleman in the center, but you're also able to monetize that through uh, the coin network, essentially. Hey, Mitch, it's Brian Kelly. So um, interesting report that you came out with today because Mark Zuckerberg came out today and talked about decentralized computing. How vulnerable mm -hmm. is somebody like Facebook to this phenomenon, to a decentralized world computer? I wouldn't say they're really vulnerable, right, because they have a different ecosystem and that's uh, covered by a different analyst at RBC. But I would say that uh, the decentralized network in general is going to be a very big topic because you can essentially now have anybody have secure computing, right? So I think that's a very big topic. So a good example I give you on a, from a social media perspective is Twitter, right? So we had a rogue employee take down the president of the United States Twitter account because he was upset when he left, right? So while that's funny and humorous to some people, we have to ask ourselves, why are we putting ourselves that, in that situation in the first place? So if we can get rid of the middleman in that case, now we've created a secure layer for everybody to get value out of. Uh, another part of your report is the whole mining asset aspect of it and, and the computer mm -hmm. uh, chip companies, the chip companies that, that specialize in these mining chips. But in terms of investing in publicly traded companies now, Mitch, are there ways to invest now or is it simply too early? Is, is really the cryptocurrency itself the best pure play way? So the best pure play way is certainly just getting involved in the cryptocurrency space, because at the end of the day, if you're going to invest in something related, you have to go the mining route. So AMD and NVIDIA chips are used to mine cryptocurrencies called Ethereum, Monero, Bitcoin Gold, not Bitcoin, um, and several other currencies, while an ASIC is being used to mine Bitcoin. So if you want to be very specific and try to get exposure to the mining aspect, there's definitely ways to do that. But from a public company perspective, the way we have to think about this in terms of the bigger picture is we're rebuilding the Internet. So if we're rebuilding the Internet, what does that mean for compute, for networking equipment, and for all these other technology devices that we have today? It means the demand is going to increase for that uh, across the board. What does it also mean for the companies like a Dropbox or, or equivalent publicly traded companies like a Dropbox? Because this is going to mean dislocation of these companies. Yes, they're going to see significant competitive pressure now because essentially people are going to decide, do I want my storage to be centralized or do I want it to be decentralized? 
And I think this is going to be a very big topic over the next several years because now it seems like people are starting to understand the difference between protocols like an Ethereum or a uh, LISC or a EOS or a Cardano and realize that that's not the same thing as the currency aspects like a Bitcoin or a Litecoin and things like that. So I think Wall Street's waking up to that. And so companies with centralized computing or centralized storage are going to have to adapt to the new ecosystem so if companies? they succeed in scaling. Cloud companies, sure. so for instance? Cloud companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So cloud companies would definitely be impacted by this. All right. Mitch, thank you.